Hello again, folks, and welcome back to Let's Play Vagrant Story. I'm your host, the Game of Darius. Last we left off, we just jumped into the actual game itself. And, uh, yeah. Directional pad or analog stick to move. The, strangely enough, the right stick controls whether or not you go into first-person mode, which only allows you to get a good look around the place. Uh, X is to cancel, circle is to confirm stuff, and when you're out here, it activates battle mode, which allows you to do the whole wooshy wooshy battle thing. Uh, square is to jump, triangle is menu. Now, uh, one of the cool things though, is that, well, L, L1 and R1 used to rotate, whereas R2 doesn't seem to do anything yet, but L2 allows you to go into your shortcut things, and we'll have plenty of options for that. And in here, we'll finally get into the actual meat. We'll have different items that we can equip, different things that we can actually craft. Yes, we can actually craft our own stuff as we go through the game. Uh, different stuff, we got er, er, cure roots that heal HP, Vera roots that lower our risk. As I said, the more risk that you have, the more chance that you will simply miss an attack. Cure paralysis, cure poison, cure numbness. It, they start you off with a pretty good set of stuff. Map is pretty self-explanatory. It shows you a more full map of this area, including an actual compass, which would be nice sometimes. Data lets you see and load and save your data. Save points are like glowy little things that you, you know, they're fairly obvious. You can check out your score and as you go through the game you'll be able to, you know, slay foes and add them to your encyclopedia so you know their things. A record time which essentially is speed running stuff. I'm not sure what the gazette, oh, yeah, it just tells you your best stats a bit against things. Your current title as you go through the different quests. There's a lot of titles. And finally we'll go to status because options is pretty self-explanatory. So you've got these different things. Uh, your different resistances. If you wear certain armors some of these will go down, some of them will go up. It's pretty neat like that. And the current equipment that we have right now is uh, none of that. You got resistances against blunt, edged piercing damage, different alignments, which I think don't really relate with one another. I'm not 100% sure on that. And the final thing is the different weapon stuff. Well, different weapon and armor stuff. So each one is best against a certain type of enemy, but the more that you use that weapon against a certain foe, the more that their affinity against them will go up. So for example, this weapon kind of sucks against everyone right now, but the more that I use it against beasts, then it will become like the best in slaying all the beasts ever. Uh, PP, as that goes up, will increase and grant you more damage and more Accuracy DP is essentially the health of the weapon. You do have to repair them after some time it You don't have to worry about it exclusively like you don't actually have to you know Worry about going to repairing it all the damn time, but it does get a little tedious Different ones have different affinities so um, Don't know why some of them are blocked out like that just yet again I've only like played two hours of this max and the type of damage that it does. Uh, and again, certain enemies will have certain weaknesses against certain types and affinities. So, yeah. Uh, I don't have a shield yet? Oh, right. It's all pretty self-explanatory stuff when you get down to the nitty-gritty. Doors can be locked or be open. When they're open, you don't have to, you know, click, click anything. This is a save point. It is handy because it lets you actually save. And let's jump up here and grab our first treasure box. Which has weapons, some armor, and some healing stuff. Cure bulbs. 
I will want a lot of because they heal a lot at a time. Now, I am personally going to switch to the axe. Tov tovarish, which you can see the comparisons. It does a little bit less damage, a little bit less agility, which is essentially the number of times you get to attack uh, quickly, I guess is the best way to put it. But it does do uh, blunt damage as well. It has that typing anyways. Uh, I think what it is is that what is highlighted in that is what you'll see them use against it. I think. It makes sense, right? Since the axe is more... Eh, whatever. I am going to, to equip this shield, though, because having resistances would be nice, especially against blunt... Yeah. And one of them is a leather glove. This leather glove provides a little bit less intelligence-based defense, which involves magic and whatnot. Uh, same affinities. Yeah, but it provides better type against it. Cool. So I'm going to quickly save here. Uh, actually, this would be a good time to see how long it does take to save. Da, da, da. Saving. Now I tried to emulate this, but there, but as good looking as it is, there was just too many graphical glitches and whatnot that I just no, no, I really would not want to have anyone sit through and watch you know random glitching happen. So you're gonna have to deal with the basic resolution. Now we get into combat again. This time against bats. Oh no, not bats. Could have sworn there was something else in this room. So here is where we get an introduction to block based puzzles. Honestly, uh, we can just naturally uh, jump and grab onto anything that's three high. But anything that's too high, we can just hit the jump button and bam, we pull ourselves up to it. I like to enter most rooms with my weapon drawn. You never know what's going to jump out at you. Well, got her open. It's no good. No even a budge. What's this? Weren't locked a moment ago, eh? No key holds this door. Be a grimoire that's doing this. Well, who's locked it then? Someone inside. Bugger if I know. Look, we'll be cut off from the others. Where are those scouts, man? They've not returned. This'll this be no time to be, for loafing around. Keep your cap on, brother. Now come up here and take a look at this. What's that? A grimoire? Ah yes, a grimoire. So we came in through here. It doesn't, it shows you on the map where you have been through and where you've come from, but it is locked. Locked with a chamomile sigil. So we can't open that just yet. Oh yeah. Pressing select allows you to change the camera angle. I prefer this angle just so that I can get a better look around the room. Makes sense, right? Right. This too be a grimoire's doing? By the gods. I have heard of it, but this? Floating rocks! And a worm, a dragon, was sighted at the Duke's manor. Well, if there's magic about, dragons won't be far behind. I worry about Gildenstern and the others. Ah, they'll be fine. Think of it. If we witness miracles such as these on Liam Monday's doorstep, what then lies within? You wear naivety like a crest, brother. Surely the Ma Meisters know of this grim war. Maybe we've just been in the dark, eh? Yet our charge is to drub those Molenkemp scoundrels and and procure the miracles of Leomonde. It's just a rumor, but I've heard that Gildenstern's lot works them magics as well. 
Rubbish. We're servants of the Lord. No true knight of the cross would dabble in the black arts. It's only a rumor, brother. But if Sidney is truly the worker of diablery and they claim he is, I say fight fire with fire. I say let the Lord be our shield. Ever the choir boy. The only shield I see is the one covering your eyes. Heretic or no, I believe what I see. And right now, I see sorcery. Swine will take a wing for the likes of us to use magic, my friend. Aye, but with a grimoire, your, fighta, your fattest sow could outfly my swiftest falcon, if you believe the chroniclers. With a grimoire, you say? You could even make cobblestones float like stone. Float like clouds. Oh, hey. I think they're alerted to our presence. Well, how you guys doing? Name Sydney. I'm here to ask you some questions. Ha! Oh, was that a crit? Sounded like a crit. Um, let's see. Oh, I think it also shows you what they're best against? Or what they're... Like, single target, they're best against edge and uh, physical weapons, and their type is human. Makes sense. I'm gonna go for the head. Knock him in the noggin a few times, that'll show him. They do attack back, I assure you. It's just... I might be doing it a little bit faster. Head attack. No, no. Come on. Okay, that was a miss. Let's go for the body. He doesn't expect a low body blow. I don't expect to be attacked at all. Let's see. Let's go for that arm. Oh, he's in the air. His body's still too... Hey. Die already. Thank you. Take an axe to the head a couple of times and you'd think you'd be down, but no. So here's another save point. Over here, though, is another chest. These chests are actually used for storage. So, you know, you can check the container and drop anything that you have inside. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty cool. Allows you to fill out your, or, uh, keep your inventory nice and empty in case you ever wanted to find something else or carry something else. I don't know. Because there is another element to this game that I'm not sure how deep I'm going to delve into. I might suck at it. I will suck at it. Earthquakes! Beasts! Actually, what I was wanting to do, since I, you know, think a little bit of ahead of things, Come on, die already, thank you. Was, I was going to swap out, uh, whenever I need to use, or fight, rather, against beasts. I was going to use the axe. But it seems it's already best against humans. So I might want to swap it out for the Fandango when I'm fighting humans. And whenever I'm fighting beast or er, Fandango for beasts, Torvarisht for the humans. That's what I mean to say. Anyways, where was I? Oh yes, slaying stuff. And things. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys. Because, you know, gotta show you guys. In these type of dungeon crawler things, there's usually traps, right? Right. They are typically invisible. Which sucks. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to detect them just yet. Other than just blindly walking into them. Like that one was placed. There's a couple of them in this first dungeon thing. It's kind of annoying. Here comes one of Parliament's watchdogs. You, go back and silence his yapping. Parliament's watchdogs? An agent of the VKP. You can follow orders, can you not? VKP is our enemy. Now go. Sir. Hello. 
Now he wants us dead, doesn't he? We're fighting humans, so I'm gonna switch back to the Torvarisht. I'm just gonna say axe. Because I'm bad at saying words. Hello, individual. I hear you like living. I'm here to fix that. Ow. I'm glad the other guy up over there is just going, eh, you know what, I'm gonna chill on the other side of this rock while you have your arm chopped off. Come on. Chop off that arm. Keep it going. Keep it chopping. That's why I use the axe. Alright, like I said, we can jump on to three high stacks. Uh, this guy's got a crossbow. He sucks. If we were lucky, that first one would not have hit us. Ooh, left arm. My, that's a fine left arm you have. Ho ho, that missed. Take that left arm. Can't aim with one left arm, or two. You know what I'm trying to say. Anyways. I'm gonna heal, because healing is good. There are, there is going to be a way to prevent or stop some damage, but uh, it's a little bit further in, just tiniest little bit further in. Cutscenes. Not again. This is a big one. I do not feel I'm welcome here. Now in this chamber there's a bunch of animals, so I'm going to swap back out for my sword. If there was a nice shortcut -y way to do the whole swapping out thing, that would be nice. Wait. Symbol, disassemble, repair, weapons issues. Yeah, okay, this is how you do that. I'll get I'll delve into that when I have more weaponry. Don't put away that damn sword, Ashley. There we go. Come on down, Mr. Bat. By the way, that DP number, uh, that shows that you'll, you know, be more proficient or whatever, and so you do more damage and accuracy with that weapon. Yeah, that goes down with, uh, as the weapon is not equipped. That was my face, you damn dog. I'm not sure how well I'm relaying all this information. Keep in mind that all of this is in the manual. It is not shown to you as you play the game. Eh, open that door. Get on the floor. And the door has been locked again. And it will only be unlocked when we slay every beast that lays in this chamber. Oh, this one had a cure root too. Nice. Oh, the second I get the good stuff would be nice. Alright. Dead dog. Another dog. Ow. I honestly don't quite know what the little little status dude at the bottom left there says. But hey, the door's been unlocked, so. That's a weird sound. Seventh Heaven, Reinforced Glove. And some more healy stuff. Alright. Why don't we take a look at that? Wait. Can I just quickly equip like this? No, I cannot. Damn it. Equipped. I want to replace this other bandage with the reinforced glove. Possibly. Okay, yeah, I do, because blunt and piercing damage suck. A little bit more defense, but I don't think there's anything else in this chamber, so I shall leave. And we'll go down this way. You do not take fall damage. So, we can fall. 
you can jump and fall any distance that you please. Ow. We're taking a bite to the leg or to the arm? Yeah, no, that sucks. Come on down here, Mr. Bat. I said come down here, not bite my face off. Damn, Ashley. So, simple block puzzle. I can't jump up there. But I can jump up here. And I can grab this block. Just move on down here. And bam, we're done. Onward. And more beasts. Lots of beasts. Seriously, the fact that there's just so many beasts makes it so as you can make this weapon, any weapon really, perfect against them through this first part of the game. Well, first chapter of the game, I guess. So here's a little bit more of an uh, advanced one. There's a switch up there. There's something holding this door shut. Hmm. I wonder. Pretty simple. You cannot destroy stone cubes, but you can destroy wooden ones. There will be uh, steel reinforced wooden cubes, crates, whatever. But uh, those ones you can only push. You cannot actually lift them up. Not battle mode. Ashley stands in front of a lever. Pull the lever. Leave the lever. Pull the lever. Oh, and by the way, this door's timed. Eh, get down there. Actually, made it through. Woo! There's gonna be a lot of things like that, aren't there? Yeah. Way to, uh, way to interrupt the flashback there, bats. Thank you for interrupting the flashback there, bats. Feels like something horrible went down at that point. Ah, another one of these. Lovely. Pretty easy. Another one of these ones, that's all. This one just requires me to take some steps up a thingy. Hit. There we go. I was wondering if I was going to have to drag the other one over or not. Ah! More goodies? Cure bulb. Cure potion. Good stuff. I'm going to save again. I think I'm going to also save, uh, cut the saves out. Minotaur. He kind of sucks, but he is a beast, which means that we should be able to kill him better with my sword. Yeah. Yeah, this this should go well. I wonder if I can... Oh, I was going to say, can I just circle around him and keep on attacking his arm? Because if that's the case, that'd be funny, but no. Go for the flank. Go for the f oh no! Nope. That's gonna hurt, isn't it? Oh, that didn't hurt as much as I thought it was going to. Oh, might as well use an item. Uh, let's heal with the cure ball. And yeah, you can cure your enemies in this too, 
it is just ill-advised. Let's go for the head again. Yeah, headshot. And headshot. Okay, his like horns blocked it or something. You do a lot of damage, sir. That hurts. Go for the risky shots. Go for the eyes, boo. Dead Minotaur. And after these mini boss type dudes, you get a score, see how much of the map you've completed, and your rank. And then, a random bonus. Yeah! Strength plus three, that's gonna be so much more damage. And you get uh, some stuff that helps progress the plot. In this case, this sigil which will unlock the wine cellar but what are these they're grimoires one to heal someone and one to temporarily decrease the target's strength i'll probably be using that one quite a bit to be completely honest and i want what's in that chest give me pelt a shield more uh, bulbs and cures paralysis. That's a little, that's 15 Yggdrasil's tears, and we've not yet encountered anything that causes paralysis. Um, by the looks of the minimap, there's no other way out, so we'll just head back out the way we came. Head to that sigil door, or will we? Sydney. So this is a risk breaker. Most men complacently accept knowledge as truth. They are sheep ruled by fear. But you are different. Always calm, detached, a smooth fellow of thought into action. A smooth flow of thought into action, unlike my vocabulary. Indeed, it is almost as if as if you had no soul. How do you do it? Body and soul are one. Yet yours are separate like a child from the knight in his storybook. Where's your soul, Risk Breaker? Is this VKP training? Or did you see something that made you shut your soul away? Show me your soul. killed your beloved wife and child. They were slain by fallen knights and jackals. Wrong. You failed to protect your wife, your child. You failed in your duty as a knight, as a husband, as a father. You killed them. Sydney! Try to catch me, Ashley Wright. Look outside yourself to find your truth. 
What's your game? Harden. Ashley. No, Merlos. Pay no, pay no heed to me. Take them right. The city of Shade will forgive your sins, my son, and call forth a power, a power that lies within you even now. This is my game. I run, you give chase. I am the heart and you the hunter. But this heart has laid a few snares of his own. I am waiting for you, Risk Breaker. Sydney! Damn! Ashley has recovered battle abilities from his suppressed memory. What is happening? I'm waiting for you, Ashley Riot. Well, that was intense. We're going to call an episode here, and then we'll be able to get into battle abilities, aka the combo system of this game, which I'm going to suck at. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Cheers.